I actually made a deal with Jihan. Jihan actually stabbed us in the back, so that's a different issue. So I'll start this by saying I've got Asperger's, so there's only so much stupid I can take before I get a bit riled and annoyed. And I'm going to start going back to 1996. Back in 1996, there was an article published called The Wild Wild Web by Mr. Greg Spears. Greg, a journalist, a real one, actually wrote about the concept of tokens. You know this thing that everyone says is new? 1996, because pig and poke type scams, tokens, ICOs, they were calling them web IPOs back then, but they were distributed. They were going to decentralize and free finance. We see the same things now, we just call them an ICO. It followed Lawrence Lessig's concepts of coder's law, going back to the 90s that was totally, utterly debunked by a professor of law called Timothy Wu. That was in 2001. Unfortunately, most people in this space seem to be too young to even remember the development of the internet or anything like this. So we're sitting there going, tokens and whatever else, no law. Tell that to MyGo. MyGo were a distributed partnership, effectively. They launched a whole lot of token sales back in 1999. The SEC basically put them over the table and raped them until they squealed. Because they said, we're a partnership. I oh, said, we're not a partnership, we're just a distributed group of developers. And the SEC figured out every single one of them that they could reach, and they said, you're liable, you're liable, you're liable, the rest are a partnership, you guys chase them up. We're putting you in jail if you can't get the money out of these guys. Guess what? Every single thing that you're saying about tokens not being covered is utter bullshit. It was all covered with cryptocurrency law, Mondex, um, CLP, eCash, Mark Twain Bank. Yes, the first cryptocurrency bank was launched in the mid-90s. All these things are not new. But you're running around going, decentralized. Decentralized is about a distributed system. Peer-to-peer -peer technology means someone can come and go, not that every person on Earth runs it. And the biggest mistake I made is in October 2008, when I was talking to the known, and which I didn't know at the time, child pornographer, James Donald, and he is, he's been put on um, a whole lot of things and he's run to different countries now because the media actually exposed him. He is a child pornographer. He was arguing about this whole concept with me and he tried to tell me that Bitcoin was broken. And I didn't get it at the time because this guy didn't want Bitcoin. He wanted child porn coin. He wanted, like all the others want, this system that works outside government. Do you know how many nodes you need to freeze to basically force miners to take Ethereum anywhere in the world? Three. You know how many court orders you need to do that? Two. That covers every token ever issued on Ethereum. Full fucking stop. Bitcoin. Whichever, whether it's the real one because it's set in stone, protocol doesn't change in Bitcoin, or these deceptively altered versions where you try and take out the ability to um, have digital signatures like seg shit and put lightning and try and lie to people that you don't need to keep records in a financial system, which you do. Well, none of them require more than two court orders. With three, done. So, a month ago I said there are three Fenital dealers who are going to get arrested. They were yesterday. Guess what's going to happen next year? Their BTC is going to be taken. There's already freezing orders on it. 
Do you think the miners in China are not going to follow this? If that miner in China does not follow the court order, three options. Number one, they can stop mining, full stop. Go home, shut business, turn off the end. That's a valid option. Number two, they can apply the change and reassign that BTC to the government under proceeds of crime legislation. Any exchange that doesn't do this will be fucked. Number three, they can abuse the system and say to the government in China and America, fuck you. Now, under Chinese rules, that makes them equally liable. That means anyone in the executive team of those miners or exchanges is liable to the same punishment. And the lucky little number one fenital guy has just got a suspended death sentence. So their choice is stop mining, one, actually implement something to stop heinous criminals, two, die. The end. If you're an exchange and you, oh sorry, bucket shop, because we don't have real exchanges. I worked for real exchanges. I worked for things like the Australian Stock Exchange or now Security Exchange in the, the past. That's an exchange. These other things that we have here are not. They're called bucket shops is the correct term. The SEC has lots of papers on them. If you want to try and do different, too bad. Your exchange will follow the law or be screwed. That's why Binance is now hopping over to the Ukraine, because they think in January, MLD5, well, we're in Europe, they're saying it won't apply to us. Of course it does. It doesn't matter that you decide to move to the Ukraine. You still can't have US customers, you still can't have European customers. And no matter how much you giggle and laugh because you're too stupid to see what's happened before, it doesn't change it. And these rules happen, and they'll all be in effect, and they've been nice and easily designed. So, it's a system to keep money secure. Money being secure doesn't mean criminals get to run round anonymously. Anonymous systems favor corruption. That simple. Privacy is the exact opposite. If you're anonymous, you're not private. If you're private, you're not anonymous, by definition. Because the definition of private means you can exchange information with another person without the rest of the world knowing. That is not anonymous. They're utterly different. So we have all these rules right now. Every single Fortune 500 company since Sarbanes-Oxley has introduced 302 decades ago is required in American law to implement worm storage. That is, write once, read many. They are required by law to never lose a record. That has been happening for 20 years. Immutability doesn't mean you can't update a database. Don't think that stupid bullshit that you get told by people. It is not what Bitcoin's about. Bitcoin is designed to bring everything out. The one thing that was always missing from every crappy token thing, every crappy e-money, every Shawmian system that failed to understand the real world was tracing. Money requires tracing. Full stop. If you have any decent amount of money that you're transferring, you have to follow tracing laws or it is not legal. If it is not legal, it won't be used. That simple. You can sit there and you can fool people for a long time and basically you've got 12 years out of um, the whole web IPO scams and everything like that. And we're right at the point where finally regulators are understanding, oh shit, I've seen this before.
It's a pig in a poke by any other name. And we're doing the same bullshit again. And they're falling for it again. So democratization of finance is the thing everyone runs around saying. What the hell does that mean? This decentralized, because it's decentralized. Really? Do you even know what the frick the word means? In computer science, it has nothing to do with everyone running a node. Even in peer systems such as Gutnala and whatever else, that's why they had ultra peers, and then peers, and then distribution nodes. This equality of systems, everyone must run a Raspberry Pi. It's the wet dream of the James Donalds of the world who want a system to allow them to have their child porn secure. Well, Bitcoin isn't that system, and blockchains are not that system. There is no way possible to make a blockchain that cannot be traced. No way to make a blockchain that cannot be seized. There is no, absolutely zero way that you can have a system that cannot be taken. And that's good, because there is no world government. That's where people get this wrong. Governments are decentralized. To do something, you need to have it bad. Child porn, people smuggling, all these things are wrong. They will be seized. Doing some minor traffic infringement and not paying your parking fine won't end up getting seized. Why? Because no one's going to be able to take action across multiple jurisdictions with enforcement in China, America, Singapore, the UK, over your parking fine. On the other hand, for money laundering, Liberty Reserve, way more decentralized than Bitcoin would ever hope to be in its biggest wet dream days. Way more. 42 countries simultaneously took down banks across the world, arrested people around the world, grabbed people in countries that had no extradition treaties. If you do crime on a blockchain, your time's up. You better stop and you better run. Just earlier this year, 2IC, Mr. Vanity Jones of Silk Road, was grabbed. And luckily for him, he wasn't in America. So, unfortunately, he gets to spend the rest of his life in a Thai prison, not an American one. So, good one. Choose your places to run. Probably not Thailand. Thank you. if you want. Why do you pretend to be Satoshi? I don't. Why do you pretend to not be a total fool? Well, I saw you in an interview on screen saying, I don't ever want to be in the public again. You know, you've bothered my family, you've bothered me, you've bothered the people I work with. This will be the last time that you ever see me. Those words from your mouth. Uh, no, I actually, you I said I didn't want to go on television again. Right. Please don't bullshit. One, that was an hour interview that was cut and changed, which you'll find out in court soon, which they altered and they asked different questions and gave different answers to. So we'll so, do a new one. Are you Satoshi? Yes. Okay. So you wrote the Satoshi white paper? Yes. And you implemented the one megabyte block limit? Uh, I put a temporary limit in there after being badgered by uh, Mr. Finney. Right. So when you had access to the uh, code base and could update the GitHub, and when you had access to your account on Bitcoin Talk, and when you had access to your satoshin at gmx.com email, when did you decide that you would stop using those and stop having influence over the project, and then side channel appear as a broke guy later with no successful business interests, no Bitcoin tied to his address, no uh, running from the government in Australia from the Australian tax office. Uh, sorry, I'm not actually running from Australia, I'm in Britain. You know those extradition laws in Britain to Australia? Sorry, morons who make things up, that's called libel and slander. That's why I've already got a number of people in court, yeah. because they're dumb. They have uh -huh. no idea that you can't 
uh, basically be a public figure in Britain and run from the government. Right. You're only a public figure because you cosplay as Satoshi, right? No. The real Satoshi actually, would still be writing Bitcoin improvement proposals. The no, real Satoshi I'm, I'm, would have been there with me fighting against BCH and taking the brand. But you didn't even fork real Bitcoin. You forked a copy of Bitcoin. You uh, made a no, copy actually, of a copy. I did not fork Bitcoin. Segwit forked Bitcoin. Bro, I don't so, think you can no, spell no, Segwit. You want to say these things and whatever else, and you want to say blah, blah, blah. No, right. I actually made a deal with right. Jihan. Jihan actually stabbed us in the back, so that's a different issue. I was watching you during the hash rate race when you were competing with Kelvin's hash rate from CoinGeek to try and actually take over as the authoritative chain against Bcash. No, and you actually, said we you would take not. over and you lost. So, sorry, didn't. Um, we limited what we bought.